Hello everyone and welcome to Sewing with Miss Rice. Why the change? Well, we are now currently done with cooking and have moved on to sewing. If you are a student in my class, you will want to pay special attention as this focuses on our classmate Janome machine. For those who are watching this video just to learn some basics about sewing and get some general tips, this will still be a perfectly good video for you, but please keep in mind, all sewing machines are different, and when using your sewing machine at home, you should always consult your manual on the various features and how to change different types of stitches as well as length. This particular model is the Janome sewing machine, and we're just going to go over some of these parts. Now, unfortunately, my camera is a standing camera, so I have a little bit of awkwardness to deal with as I attempt to go and show some of these parts. So please bear with me for some of the odd angles we're going to have at this time. So first thing I want to mention is this part right here is the foot. It is what holds down the fabric, or in today's case, paper, as it goes through. It also helps to feed um, so, um, the material through the machine as you're sewing. Down here is where we would normally have our bobbin. We do not have one today since I'll simply be doing a demonstration on how to practice sewing without spending a lot of money using fabric. Over here, oh, there we go. So right here we have the various styles and selections. I can use to select the type of stitch I want. This is currently set to a basic straight stitch that will go, which is what you usually want for some of the more basic projects and what we want for today's practice. Right here, we have the um, selector for the length of the stitch. Length of stitch is very important. The smaller the stitch, generally the tighter and stronger it will be. So you want to make sure you know how to do that. Down here, if I can get a good shot, here we go. This is the reverse button found below both dials. The reverse button will allow the material you're using to then go backwards through the machine. This is usually done to go and create locking stitches at the end. We'll go more into this when we use it later, but one thing I want to mention is this is a reverse button. It does not undo stitches already done. It can only make them add more stitches going the opposite direction you were before. Please, please, please keep this in mind. Because much like in life, there is no reverse button on the or rewind button on a sewing machine. Over here on the side of most sewing machines, you'll see a nice big dial like this. What this will do, and unfortunately you can't see it from here, is if I turn this, it will move the sewing needle up and down to so that way I can easily remove the thread from the machine. Below it on this machine is the power switch. You will notice that at this time it is completely the sewing machine is off and you can tell because there mm -hmm. is no light on underneath. There we go, we'll just get into a nice position here. I apologize guys, this is, there we go. Okay, it's a little sideways, but I hope you will bear with me on this. So right here is the needle. I'm going to just turn the dial. You always want to turn it away from you as it will continue to go up and down as needed. This allows you to go and help get a few starting stitches, make sure everything's where you need it, etc. Now this time, I am going to use a piece of paper. Now some of you are going, Miss Rice, why are you using this piece of paper with straight lines on it? Well, when you're beginning sewing and you're getting used to your sewing machine, it's a good idea to practice on something not fabric. Why? Fabric is expensive. We do not necessarily want to spend a lot of money learning how to go and do just basic stitches and making simple mistakes. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use your paper to go and do this. Now if you're feeling more confident but maybe you're not as good at say curves or doing unusual embroidery stitches, you can easily download any coloring book page from the internet, print it out, and challenge yourself by going and following those lines. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the foot. If you look at the foot right here, let's see if I can't zoom in for you just a little bit. We're just going to zoom in right in 
this area right here. If you look right here, there is a very tiny line right there. And we like that line because it allows you to make sure everything's lined up. So I'm currently looking. And I'm getting ready to put my presser foot down. Now there's a lever behind the, mm, this that will let you put it down. Be gentle with it. You don't need to be rough. Now when I put this down, I notice, hey, this little line here, it's not in line with this. In fact, you guys have a better angle of it than I do right now, to be honest. So I can go and lift it up again and move it ever so slightly and place it until I have it exactly where I want it and I can keep it straight. Next, I'm going to very carefully lower. Now normally, if I was going to be sewing, I would make sure that everything was threaded and everything was going, for, mm -hmm, going nice and safe first. But today I'm not threading it, I'm just practicing making straight lines. I'll now turn on my machine so I have the light and I can double check. Yes, that all looks pretty nice and straight. Looks beautiful on the screen that I can see. Now below, I'm not going to pull this up, but there is a pedal, much like a gas pedal on a car. All sewing machines have a pedal, and you want, just like oh, on a car, you would not slam down on the gas to go peeling out of the parking lot. I don't know, unless you're, of course, you're one of those wild and crazy drivers. You're going to want to go slow at first with the sewing machine as well. It's better to go on the slow side than to go fast. Remember, if you're a beginning sewer, it's okay to take a little bit of extra time. It's better to get it right the first time than to make a lot of silly mistakes and then have to spend three times as long because then you have to undo the mistakes or worse, buy new fabric. Now I'm going to put my hands on either side of the paper just to guide it. I will not be pushing this paper. Some of you may have noticed a moment ago when I started going and putting the needle in that the paper started to move forward. There is a small foot underneath that helps move the paper to make sure everything's going in the correct direction. Now, I'm going to very carefully hold the paper. Can you hear the sound? Whoops. There we go. Now, I will admit this is not one of my best sewing jobs, I can tell right now. I'm already a little crooked, I'm a little wobbly. I'm going to slow up as I get a little closer to the end and stop. I'm going to turn it off. Now, if my needle was all the way down, I would then go and take the time to lift it up, but the needle is not down in the paper. I'm going to very carefully move this. And now, let me zoom back out again. There we go. Zoom out. Now, if you take a look at my paper here, You'll see I have little lines, and I can see just how good a job I did. And wouldn't you know it, I went outside the line a couple of times. My stitches would not have been very even in this particular case. I will admit I am not used to this particular sewing machine and seeing here. And I'm going to not use the excuse of having all this equipment on here, although that I will admit that did make it easier. But this would tell me that maybe I need to do some practice. Luckily, there's lots of lines, so I can practice again and again as I need to. This is a really great way for any beginning sewer to begin practicing. It also gives them an idea of just how much power there is behind a sewing machine and your particular sewing machine if you have a new one. So my recommendation, even if you have been sewing for a while, test out your new sewing machine with a simple piece of paper. This way you're not spending a lot of time, money, and fabric, and you can then get a good feel for your sewing machine and know what you can use it for. Well, that's all for this video, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be doing some more videos on some sewing basics, such as ironing and cutting out the pattern and how the patterns work. But in the meantime, happy sewing!